So you've created a really long macro in the ATEM Mini, changing your upstream key settings, loading an image from a media pool, running a transition to a new camera angle, but now you wanna make one tiny modification to some part of that macro, but there's no edit button and there's no way to see what your macro actually does. In this video, I will show you how to edit specific parts of your macros so you can save time when creating automations for your ATEM Mini. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. This tutorial will work for any of the ATEM models, including the ATEM Mini, the Constellation series, and even the Television Studio line. So we're gonna jump right into this video. In order to follow along, you'll need to have downloaded the ATEM software control app onto your computer. So let's do a quick recap of how to record a macro in the ATEM software control. First, open up the macros palette by clicking on the macros menu or by pressing Command Shift M on a Mac. With the Create tab selected, click on the plus, give your macro a name, press record, and now anything you click in the software control will be recorded into this macro. For example, let's say we're creating a macro to create this super source layout in the ATEM Mini Extreme. Super source is a feature in the ATEM that lets you create these kinds of side-by-side -side layouts or put multiple people into small boxes. The ATEM Mini Extreme has one super source generator, so if you wanna have a few different layouts, a macro is a great way to create what are effectively presets for the different layouts. So let's create a macro right now, which will recreate this super source layout of my main camera with a computer screen next to it. I use this layout all the time on my live streams so I can show something on my screen, but still have my main camera visible. The way I usually create macros is I first set up my super source layout the way I want it to look at the end, and then I record a macro that will reset each of the settings. So I've got this super source already configured and now I'm gonna go click record in this macros palette and I'm gonna go into each setting and press enter in every box. So at this point, every time you click any buttons in here, it'll get recorded into the macro. So I'm gonna go ahead and just recreate all the settings for the super source right now by clicking into the control box one, uncheck and recheck, enable box, choose the camera, click into the field here, press enter, click into the field, press enter, and same with the size. And of course, I need to also click on the crop and confirm all the crop settings. Then I'm gonna go into box two and do the same thing. Uncheck and recheck, enable box, choose the camera input, choose the position and press enter in all these, and then check and uncheck crop. One tricky thing is I also need to go into box three and four, even though I'm not using them and make sure they're not enabled. So again, anything you're clicking into the software control will be recorded into the macro, but importantly, if you don't change a setting, that won't be recorded. And that's where being able to edit your macros comes in really handy. So once I'm done confirming all the settings, I'm gonna click the record button again to stop recording. Now this macro is saved. But what happens if I made a mistake in the macro? Like what if I wanted to change the X position of one of the super source boxes? It would be really annoying to have to redo the whole thing from scratch. So let's go ahead and fix this. First, go up to File and click Save As. This will open a dialog to save all of the settings into your computer. I'm just gonna call this Macros, click Save, and if you have all of the checkboxes checked, then everything in the ATEM will be saved in this file, which is a great way to back up your ATEM or even copy it from one to another. But right now, all we care about are the macros. So actually click Select None and then check only the macros box. Now when you save this file, it'll save only the macros into that XML file. So now buckle up because this is gonna get a little bit complicated. Now that your macros are in the XML file on your computer, you can make changes to that file and then restore them back into the ATEM. To edit your macro, you'll need to edit this XML file. You can use any text editor for this, but it needs to be a text editor like the Notepad app on Windows or text edit on a Mac not a full word processor like Microsoft Word. Any text editor is fine. I'm gonna use Sublime Text since that's what I normally use when I'm working with source code. So open this XML file in your text editor of choice. Here's the file I just created, and I'll go ahead and open this with Sublime Text. This is gonna look a bit overwhelming, but the good news is I don't actually need to teach you everything about XML in order for you to be able to make changes. The file that the ATEM creates is pretty readable, and you should be able to figure out what's going on by just reading it. So there's a bunch of macros in addition to the one we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and search for the name of the one we just created. I call it Super Source Setup. So as you can see, every time I changed the setting, it recorded a new line into this file. So here is where I turned on one of the boxes. Here's where I chose the camera input. Here's setting the X and Y positions. Here's the box size. Here's turning on the mask and the mask settings. This is turning on the second box, choosing the camera input, 
setting the positions, and here is turning off the other two super source boxes. The way you can understand this is by thinking of the ID as the name of the action to take. So that'll be things like super source v2 box enable or box input, box x position. And then these attributes on the right are the specific settings for that action. These all start with super source zero because there is only one super source generator on the ATEM Mini Extreme and everything starts counting at zero. Then we have box index, which is which box this will affect, which again is numbered starting at zero. So we have zero, one, and two, and three. And then this last part will be the actual value of the setting you're changing. So for box enable, where it'll be either true or false. For choosing the box input on box zero, it's gonna be the name of one of the sources. Then there'll be things like the X position, which is that negative 10 and zero, like we saw in the software control app. The other thing to note here is that the order of all these lines is very important since the ATEM will run the actions in this order. So this is where you can make changes to your macro. If you wanted to change the value of a position of the box, you could change the value of the X position attribute. Or maybe you wanted to change which camera input goes into one of the super source boxes. So you'd find the super source V2 box input action, and then change the value of the input. Another really powerful thing you can do, especially once you start creating more complex macros, is change the order that things run in. Like if you turned on an upstream key and then later realized that the position was slightly off, and then you changed it while you were recording the macro, when you play back the macro, you might see it first turn on but be in the wrong position and then go into the right spot. So if you look at the macro you created, you would see the position action after the on-air action. And now you can move it to before the on-air action to fix it. So do whatever you need to do to fix up the macro. I'm gonna change this to camera two, for example. You can change these values, you can change the name or the positions of your macros too. Let's say I actually wanted to call this one super source cam two instead. This is also a great way to create copies of your macros. Let's actually go ahead and call this camera one, change that back to camera one, and I'm gonna select all of these lines and make a copy of them down here. I'm gonna change the index to 61, and I'll change this to camera two here and here. One thing I will warn you about is that any mistakes in this file are going to pretty much just break everything. Every quote mark and angle bracket is significant, and if you leave one out or have one too many, things are gonna get weird. So, okay, you fix up your macro and now you can save this file, but saving the file only saves it on your computer. Now you need to get it back into the ATEM. So go back into the ATEM software control app, go up to the file menu and click restore. Find the XML file that you just saved. And this will open up the checkboxes again, and it'll tell you what you've got in the file. As you can see, everything here is grayed out because the only thing in this file are the macros. So I'm gonna make sure that macros is checked and then click restore. As long as there are any problems with the file, your macros in the ATEM mini will be replaced with the macros from the XML file. So here we can see that I've got now my two super source macros for camera one and camera two. Now it is a very good idea to actually test this macro just to make sure nothing went wrong. It's very easy to make a mistake when hand editing the XML, so you'll definitely want to double check that your macro works as expected after you import it again. XML is super picky, so any missing angle brackets or quote marks will cause problems trying to import. So let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to first mess up my super source so that we can see to make sure that it actually changes back. I'm going to change this around, change the crop, and do the same with box two. And then I'll click on the run tab, choose recall and run. That way, as soon as I press this button, it'll run the macro. So I'll go ahead and press super source camera one, which should set that super source back up the way I had it before. And if I press super source cam two, it should just change the input that's in that box. Sure enough, this seems to be working. One thing to note, again, only the things you record into the macro will be set. So if I didn't actually have super source on, on air, this macro won't bring super source on air because I didn't put the program action into the macro. You can see it's changing the super source in the preview window, but it's not bringing it on air. If you wanted it to actually also bring the super source on air, you would just make sure that you press this super source button as you record the macro. Once you do this a few times, you will get the hang of it and editing macros will be super easy. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.